the Cross Media Council's Coyotes vs. Jackrabbits pregame special. I'm Courtney Starrett. We'll be hearing from USD coaches, players, and sports reporters about the upcoming Missouri Valley Football Conference game. We'll discuss what's made the difference between last season and this year, expectations for Saturday's game at SDSU, and how the in-state rivalry is changing. To start us off, we welcome USD head coach Joe Glenn and offensive coordinator Wesley Bashorner. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Courtney. Thank you. Coach Joe Glenn. Yes. It's been three years since USD joined Division I and began playing SDSU again. Has USD closed the competitive gap or is it still something that needs to progress? Well, we won three conference games a year ago and to date with one conference game remaining, we have not won one this year. So the answer is not good. We have not closed like we had hoped, but uh, we're on a mission and um, yeah, we'll get it done. It just, uh, we had a lot of injuries this year and uh, just some crazy things. Our quarterback broke his thumb in the first game of the year against Oregon and a lot of voodoo worked against us this year. Coach Bashorner. The team has had to deal with a number of injuries over the season. What have the coaches and players done to roll with the punches? Is it something you're still dealing with? Oh, uh, you deal with it on a daily basis, but it's next man up mentality. Whoever's, there's scholarship players all over our team and those guys got to show up and, and perform. Like Coach Glenn has said, you know, if, if we put you in the game, we believe that you can succeed and we're going to put our guys in the best situation possible to succeed. So it doesn't matter if you're first string or fourth string, if you're in the game, you've got to help us and, and we're all fighting the same fight in order to get a win. When it comes to recruiting, how tough is it with NDSU, SDSU, and you and I in our conference? Is it something that you're battling with, Coach Glenn? Well, I think we could both take a swing at this, but it, it's competitive. Uh, and we compete in that arena, uh, not our players. Although when they're on campus with recruits, our players, they, they compete also. But that, that's a big time part of what we're doing. And I think winning helps you get recruits. I hate to say it, but... Uh, People like to go where they can win. And uh, so it's a fight, it's a dog fight, but we're, we're on the job. Uh, we always say that recruiting is like shaving. If you don't do it every day, you look like a bum. So we better recruit every day and we better shave every day. Coach Bishorner, in order to win, what does your offense need to do? Are there any weaknesses on SDSU side of the ball that you need to prepare for? Well, there's not a lot of weaknesses on their side of the football. They've got a lot of returning starters, uh, but really we've got to control the line of scrimmage. If we control the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, we feel like we can be successful. And in any conference game, that's where it's won. It's won up front, and you see it throughout the season. Um, but we're going to do our best job of getting our guys the football in space. If we can create some space and a slippery field, we feel like we can be successful. I think it's a little bit more difficult to tackle on a slippery field like we're going to face than it is to run with the football because you know where you're going when you have the football. So any way we can create space, whether it's at the line of scrimmage or on the perimeter, we're going to give ourselves a chance to win. And you know, we got to score some points early and start fast. I think if we do that, we're going to give ourselves a shot to win the game. It's been about a month since the last Coyote victory, and how do you get your team pumped up for this SDSU matchup? You know, Courtney, they have been pumped up for every game. There's no magic wand uh, that you wave over your players and say, okay, now you guys get pumped up. Um, I think you get pumped up by working hard at practice every day and learning your craft and becoming confident in what you know and be confident in what you do. Um, and then when you take the field, when you have confidence, you're pumped up to go out and play your best. And um, so I think that's probably more than anything the correct answer. But I will also tell you, uh, as an old coach, you, you can usually get a little more pumped up. Um, for two games a year, and I think usually one is your opener, and then one is your arch rival. And I believe this game is our arch rival. State and the U couldn't get any better than this. Our kids will be pumped up. And Coach Bashorner, is it important that the players feel the weight of this rivalry in the game? Oh, I think so. There's, there's a point where, you know, whenever you're playing teams or players that you've played before, whether it's in high school or your rivalry, which South Dakota State is, our guys, they've it's not pressure that you should feel, nor anxiety. It is wanting to do your best. And like Coach Glenn hit on, it's if you prepared yourself that way, you're going to go out and do it. And I firmly believe that. But our guys, they know what's at stake. They want to beat this team as bad as they want to beat any other team. Uh, and we've been preparing the right way. We just haven't come out and played our best football. And, you know, we have an opportunity this Saturday to play our best football, and I think our guys will. 
Right, thank you so much, Coach Glenn and Coach Bershorner, for joining thank me. Thank you. Coming up, USD quarterback Kevin Earl and defensive lineman Drew Iddings join me on the CMC's Coyotes vs. Jacks pregame special. This is Josh and his good friend Caitlin. Josh is the perfect coyote. So how can you be a good coyote just like Josh? Well, follow these simple steps. A good coyote always helps a friend in need. Josh doesn't mind holding on to Caitlin's purse. Don't worry, Josh. It's not that embarrassing. A good coyote is also a gentleman. Don't worry, Caitlin. Josh has you covered for your snacks. Hope you have enough money, Josh. She looks hungry. A good coyote also cheers for the home team. So it's no surprise that Josh remembers the most important rule, never date someone from South Dakota State. Follow these steps like Josh, and you'll be a good coyote. Go Yotes! Spain is known for many things. It's food, it's dancing, it's bullfighting, and fiesta. Sometimes the classroom just isn't enough. Step outside the classroom. Experience what it's like to go snorkeling in the Atlantic or ride a camel in Morocco. With the Global Learning Program at USD, you can earn credits taking the trip of a lifetime overseas. Experience what you're missing. Experience global learning. Welcome back to the Cross Media Council's Coyotes vs. Jacks pregame special. I'm Courtney Starrett. We're talking with USD coaches, players, and sports reporters about the upcoming Missouri Valley Football Conference game. Here with me now, USD starting quarterback Kevin Earl and defensive lineman Drew Iddings. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. First, Kevin, this is your first time starting a game in Brookings. What does this game mean to you and your team? And are you putting more importance on this game than previous games this season? I mean, I feel like you have to. Uh, this is a game you have marked on your schedule from you know day one, and it not only means a lot to us, but it means a lot for our fans and our alumni and um, you know the entire state of South Dakota. So uh, it definitely can be a make-or-break kind of game. With this being such an up and down season for the team, how's your confidence going into this game and what's the energy like in the lock locker room this week? Uh, confidence level is high, you know, we always stay confident, we, you know, confident in each other and our abilities. Um, and I think, you know, it doesn't take much to get excited for this kind of game. Uh, you know, you see the crowd, you see how excited everyone is and the pride that goes, goes along with this. And, um, I'm not worried that anyone's not going to be excited or anything like that. It's definitely just comes along with the game. Drew, how would you summarize this year's defense, both the good and the bad? Overall, we've done pretty good. You know, we've had a couple younger guys in the secondary that have really stepped up and started to play really well. The good thing is we've all just kind of stayed together as a team, and we've had our lows, but then again, we've all come around and we've picked each other up, and we've made sure we've stayed pretty high all around. And last year you contained Zenner for the most part, and what's it going to take to repeat that feat? And do you guys expect the Jacks to come out and run the ball hard at you guys? We do, depending on the weather conditions. I mean, but other than that, yeah, we did contain Zenner pretty well last year, but we would probably just stick to our game plan that we did last year and then just stick to our fundamentals of football and just play football. Kevin. In order to win, what does your offense need to do? Are there any weaknesses in SDSU's side of the ball that you're targeting? Um, well, you know what? It's obviously the, the field and the, the elements are going to play um, a part in this game. And I think if we just need to focus on executing and um, running our plays as best we can, uh, you know, they have a solid defense across the board. Um, but, you know, we feel like we can expose them in some, in some ways and, and take our shots when we have them. But, um, 
definitely uh, I think we offense played well coming off of last week. So if we can keep that up and keep the momentum going, I think we uh, should do pretty well. Drew, what does the defense need to do to slow down SDSU's offense? And are there specific things that SDSU, SDSU's offense does well that our defense needs to prepare for? Well, everyone knows Zach Center is one of the best running backs in the Missouri Valley Conference and in football in general. So we got to find a way to slow him down and just try to take him out of the game. So we just get Sumner trying to throw the ball, then we just got to keep our pass rush up like we have the past couple games. Kevin, this will be your last game with a lot of your offensive linemen. Is there a desire to give them a high note to go off on? Absolutely, um, especially for the seniors that are going to be out there playing. Uh, it's the last taste we're going to have in our mouth for the next nine months and going into the off season. So it'd be great to have those seniors go out with a high note and also carry that win and into the off season, and leave us feeling a little better. How much of an impact do you think the rival rivalry has on the two teams when they face each other on the field? Um, huge. I mean, it's going to be a sold-out game. It, it is every year we play them. Um, and the rivalry just brings an extra bit of intensity and an extra bit of hate. And, uh, and it's kind of what fuels, fuels us in a situation like this. What about you, Drew? How do you think the rivalry affects the preparation? Uh, definitely, like Kevin said, we just during practice, it's going to be upbeat. Everyone's going to have a lot of confidence. Everyone's going to be just rearing to go for this game and the crowd's going to be into it and it's just going to be a fun atmosphere to play in. Thanks so much for joining me. That was USD quarterback Kevin Earl and defensive lineman Drew Iddings. Coming up, Coyote News' sports director Grant Boziaki and sports commentator Nathan Ellebecker. Stay tuned. You're fired, Dad. You're fired, Dad. USD's Contemporary Media and Journalism Department can be seen and heard all over campus. Faculty members know that hands-on experience now is the key to success after college. Get professional experience by participating in one of the many practicums offered. Have your voice heard on the radio. Edit a promo for a campus organization. Investigate breaking news stories for a weekly newspaper. Design advertisements for local businesses. Get involved with the CMJ Department at USD and start your future now. be in his second season with the Coyotes, but USD has already high hopes for kicker Miles Bergner. The sophomore came to USD with an extensive resume as a high school kicker and punter, only missing one field goal his senior year. Bergner missed nine kicks last season, but the Colorado native is already showing signs of improvement this year. Although he was sidelined by a concussion last week against Illinois State, he is 16 for 16 on field goals this year and has made his last 18 as a Coyote. Those stats put him near the top of all kickers in the Missouri Valley Conference. However, Bergner doesn't let that pressure get to him. He says that the key is to relax and that he treats every field goal the same, whether it be from 20 yards or 50. To be able to be calm in tense moments and calm in moments of pressure and it translates out here perfectly because it's exactly what I have to do in moments of pressure. He has also received the Fred Mitchell Award twice this season. The award honors players for excellence both on and off the field.
Welcome back. This is the Cross Media Council's Coyotes vs. Jacks pregame special. I'm Courtney Starrett. We've heard from USD head coach Joe Glenn and offensive coordinator Wesley Beshorner. We've also heard from two of the team's leaders, quarterback Kevin Earl and defensive lineman Drew Eddings. Now joining me are two sports reporters, Grant Boziaki with the Volant and Coyote News and Nathan Ellebecker with the Volant. Thanks for joining me. It's good to be here. Thanks for having us, Courtney. Grant, from a reporter's standpoint, how have the Coyotes looked to you this year compared to last? Um, well, there's really no point in sugarcoating it. Look at our record, 2-9. and nine. It has not been pretty. We were hoping to build off of last year when we had a good three-game winning streak in the middle of the year, and it just didn't happen. I mean, we have not won a game in nearly two months. Uh, Coyote Nation, you know, they're definitely disappointed this year. It's been a rough year. And I mean, if I'm t if I'm looking at the team as well, um, and I mean, the first place you want to start was with the two and nine record, and we never we didn't have a three game win streak like we did in the middle of the season last year. Um, but I think that also we're kind of missing that one big playmaker that we had last year. Um, last year uh, we kind of seemed like Kevin Earl at times um, stepped in on the offense. And Riley um, Donovan, I mean, he was a big play waiting to happen last year. This yeah. year, and then on the quiet. and then on the defensive end, it just seemed like at the right time sometimes uh, Tyler Starr would just um, add a jolt to that side of the ball, um, just getting around the edge. Um, but that's just missing this year, I think. Um, mm -hmm. and they just don't have that electric um, spark in um, each and every game uh, that some teams are looking for. And that's, I mean, that's the difference between uh, kind of a faulty season and a season that kind of had a little bit of optimism, I think, last year did. Nathan, have you seen any improvement from the Yotes this year? I think that um, one place that I felt pretty comfortable with coming in the season and that um, at the beginning of the season it, uh, the Coyotes really could rely upon was um, their running backs. But then it ended up kind of being a fault in, um, in the end so far um, because we had two injuries uh, to two of our top running backs um, in Bauma. Um, and as well uh, as well as Jasper Sanders, um, but for it was kind of the same stories last year. I mean, yeah, that right to the end of the depth chart, running backs last year. Vandermont had a step net running back this year. You're asking a redshirt freshman, Corey Kilgore, last week had a start and you know get 10 carries and. That's just asking a lot out of a young guy. And I think me and Grant would both agree that uh, we were really impressed with what Trevor Baumel was coming into the season doing. Um, he was really hitting holes well, and when we were especially excited to see what Jasper Sanders would end up doing. Um, and then it kind of falls by the wayside. It's tough to see that um, leading up into a game like this, those two won't be on the field in red. Yeah, because they, they complement each other perfectly. If you think about it, Bauma is that power guy that goes up the middle, and Jasper, you know, we're fortunate for him that he's a senior, so he won't be able to play in his last game in the biggest rivalry, you know, the biggest game for us in the season. But yeah, he had that shiftiness, and they complement each other, but yeah, Kevin is going to... Last week, we were really one-dimensional. That really hurt us, so... You gotta hope that it's not the same. It's not the same thing this week. Those two guys. I mean, they're still uh, our leading rushers. I mean, despite not um, having played recently, um, Jasper's still at the top, and then Baum is second. Um, and then also, uh, when we got our couple wins, uh, Ryan Sager also stepped up and was getting outside the pocket um, when he was replacing Kevin Earl. Um, when Kevin Earl went down with injury, um, and. Just it, it just kind of um, happened that the running game has kind of fallen off here. It's not a place that we can just turn to. Um, and now we have to rely a little bit more also um, on Kevin Earl stepping back in the pocket. Yeah, like back to your original question, though, I mean, we really haven't improved. If you, if you were going to say we improved on one aspect of the game, it's got to be kind of the unsexy part, the special teams, which nobody, you know, you don't win games off of special teams. I mean, you can say you do, but... Miles Bergner, sophomore, 16 of 16 field goals. He's been the best kicker in the conference. So it's probably not a good thing when your biggest improvement in the year has been special teams with your kicker and punter, and that's been the case. What's the strongest part of USD's game, and what SDSU weakness can the Coyotes use to their advantage? Grant? Um, the strongest part, did you say, for USD right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, Kevin Earl had a good game last week. He's been up and down in the year since returning from injury. So you got to believe that if we are going to win the game, it's got to be on the arms of, you know, the shoulder of Kevin, of Kevin Earl. And 
I don't know. It's, it's really up to him if, we, if our offense is going to score enough points because you can't ask the defense. The defense has been playing really poor all year. And it's unrealistic to think that they're just going to step up and play great out of nowhere. I think uh, maybe the, the best um, player right now, and if you look back at Saturday, um, the best player was Eric Schufert on the field for the Coyotes. Um, Eric Schufert's come on, and I mean, he hasn't started every game. Um, he's been in every game, but he hasn't started. Um, but he's coming on, and he's starting to make catches for the Coyotes, which is, I mean, it's, you can kind of think of it as surprising, but when you see him out there um, making the plays, he's fast. Um, he's willing to get hit in the middle of the field. Um, so he's um, adding that element. He's getting open for Kevin Earl. Uh, maybe that, that can, he can slide into some openings um, in the secondary up in Brookings. Um, I think right now he's kind of the only bright spot if you look at um, offense and defense. We've been super impressed by him um, in the two games. Uh, he's kind of a fun guy. He's a fun interview too. Um, if you ever talk to him, his nickname's Munchie. Um, but he he, he's been kind of the only bright spot it really feels like. Um, we're not entirely certain um, what Kevin Earl's going to do from game to game. It kind of doesn't seem like he has enough time in the pocket sometimes, and then other times he's overthrowing the ball, whether or not that's coming still back from his injury uh, to his throwing arm um, or where that's coming from. But Schufert's kind of stepped up a little bit, and maybe he'll end up getting open and making some big plays because he's also a special teams guy as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. To be successful on Saturday, what do players need to do? Nathan? Well, I, there's three guys uh, for SDSU that no doubt um, are the three uh, leaders on that team, and they are all, all on offense. Um, you got Austin Sumner, who's uh, the senior quarterback, and then you got Zach Zender, who's the senior running back and one of the best running backs in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, and then also uh, one of the top performers at the wideout position this year has Jake, uh, been Jake Weinke. Um, those three guys, they're just creating a three-headed monster now that Sumner's back also from injury. Um, he's been super impressive. He's getting the ball out to Jake, and then obviously, I mean, we all, I mean, anybody around the state has been following SDSU USD the last couple of years. Uh, we all know what Zach Zenner can do. I mean, he's an All-American. I mean, last year we kind of talked about how we thought they played well stopping him, which he could have had broke out some more big runs, and he still had 131 yards in last year's game, so that really shows you how good he is and how tough he is to stop. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that uh, the, with them... Um, it's kind of scary to think that uh, Jake Weinke has been putting up numbers that are uh, similar to um, NFL players um, that have come out of the FCS. Um, I know there was one uh, distinct comparison that was made last night by Valley Football on Twitter um, comparing him to Randy Moss. He has more yards um, than Randy Moss, and he's a, he's a freshman, and he's coming in and he's making big plays for them. Uh, he's a guy that, I mean, nobody, of course, coming in the season expects. Um, everybody's expecting that when we go up to Brookings on November 22nd uh, that it's going to be the Zach Zenner show. Well, all of a sudden you got this star wide receiver who's got a uh, finally his healthy quarterback um, back. I, I think he's kind of a scary uh, proposition for the Coyote defense to wonder about. USD lost to SDCU last year 27-12. What are your predictions for this year's outcome? Grant? Um, well, being a, being a student here, obviously you want to say that they're going to go win and that is the hope. Fans will be just nuts and super happy about that, but you can't honestly, I don't think, um, when we have an eight-game losing streak, think that we're going to go and uh, beat them in Brookings. Hoping it's kind of like last year's game where we had a chance at the end and Kevin Earl unfortunately threw an interception that was returned for a touchdown. When we lost 27-12, we were down by eight, I remember, at one point. So I, my hope is that in the fourth quarter, at least, you know, maybe we get a touchdown and then one, it's a one-score game or we have a chance to tie the game but I'm not going to predict that we at will win. I, I kind of am getting this feeling when I think about the game. Um, one of two things that either it's just uh, going to just be an absolute uh, stomping um, in one sense, or it's just going to be a kind of a rally around game for Joe Glenn or a rally around game for the Coyotes. Um, I think it'd be a, kind of a stretch for anybody to go out and say that a battered team like the Coyotes, um, a team that's been uh, riddled with injuries throughout the year, that they're going to go in and they're going to just uh, kind of shock the state and go beat a 7-4 and four team like SDSU. Um, I, I just think that if uh, the Coyotes can limit turnovers, uh, they can keep um, SDSU, off, they can get SDSU off the field on third downs. Um, they can keep it a uh, a one possession game. Um, I would ex I would expect there to be a little bit uh, um, ground heavy game uh, between both teams because it is going to be very cold. 
Um, so I guess I would I would say a one possession game um, if the Coyotes can really rally around and get one. You were kind of um, you kind of starting off there. I thought by predicting a win, I was thinking. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to swallow that. I I, kinda, I wish I could go out and say that, but I don't want my video uh, my face plastered with a. Uh, Coyote victory, and then all of a sudden it's just a stomping, and Zach Zenner runs for 300 yards. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm scared to see what Zenner's stats are going to be at the end of the game. I mean, Marshawn Koprich last week, he was looking like Marshawn Lynch at times. He ran for over 200 yards, and he's the best running back in the conference um, statistics-wise, but Zenner's right behind him. We know how good mm -hmm. Zenner is, so mm -hmm. that I'm a little scared to see what Zenner will do. Yeah. Both of you have covered USDA athletics for many seasons. Have you noticed a change in the rivalry, whether it's from the way the teams play when they face each other or from fan involvement? Well, I mean, it is, it's a great rivalry. I mean, the st the, all the students are excited for it. I know more than a typical game, obviously, but a rivalry isn't really a good rivalry until both teams are kind of splitting the games, and that hasn't been the case. I mean, we haven't won for a long time versus SDSU, and we have lost the last two years versus them. Score says by, you know, a lot of points, 31 to 8 two years ago, 27 to 12 last year. So, I mean, the only way we can make it a better rivalry is at least getting it close this year, and I don't know if we're going to win, but it's not a good rivalry until, you know, you go into the game not knowing who's going to win, I guess. And I mean, I've only been here um, for a year and a half now, um, being a sophomore, and so I mean, I haven't been fully engulfed with um, either campus life um, with this rivalry, um, but I haven't seen uh, USD and um, go out and beat the Jackrabbits in the two major sports that kind of people associate the rivalry well, with, with men's I mean, basketball and football. So. I mean, when they beat them in women's basketball, I mean, how outstanding mm -hmm. was that? Mm -hmm. So you got to hope that the men can... Mm -hmm. you know, do something along the lines of that. I think that that was kind of um, an opportunity for a tipping point um, with the women's basketball game, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, as big as, I mean, going and winning a football game at Brookings could potentially be. Thanks so much, Nathan and Grant, for joining me today. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. That's all for the Coyotes versus Jack's pregame special. You heard from coaches Joe Glenn and Wesley Bashorner, quarterback Kevin Earl and defensive lineman Drew Iddings, plus sports reporters Grant Boziaki and Nathan Ellenbecker. SDSU hosts USD in Missouri Valley Football Conference action on Saturday. The game starts at 2 in Brookings. Thanks so much for watching. For the Cross Media Council, I'm Courtney Starrett. This is Josh, and his good friend Caitlin. Josh is the perfect coyote. So how can you be a good coyote just like Josh? Well, follow these simple steps. A good coyote always helps a friend in need. Josh doesn't mind holding on to Caitlin's purse. Don't worry, Josh. It's not that embarrassing. A good coyote is also a gentleman. Don't worry, Caitlin. Josh has you covered for your snacks. Hope you have enough money, Josh. She looks hungry. A good coyote also cheers for the home team. So it's no surprise that Josh remembers the most important rule, never date someone from South Dakota State. Follow these steps like Josh, and you'll be a good coyote. Go Yotes!